In this video, we will examine markets that had similar setups to what we are seeing today in terms of the 50-day and 200-day, but markets that should not have been sold because in 1987 we went on to make higher highs, 1998 higher highs, 1990 higher highs. So let's look at some similarities and differences. Obviously, the similarities are the 200-day in these charts is shown in red, the 50-day is in blue. The similarities are you get the, the cross in all of them in some shape, form, or fashion. And in this case, you get the 200-day rolling over, which is similar to today. In 1998, that's not similar. The 200-day moving average never rolls over. Here it does. So in my mind, this case isn't all that similar for, for several reasons. 2011, the present day, we get a topping consolidation type pattern. This is rolling over in a somewhat controlled manner that looks like it's sustainable. This peak in 1998 really isn't similar to this one. Why? Because this is a sharp rally up, almost a panic rally, and then a sharp decline. Look at the slope of this 50. It's sharp. The other thing that's, that's radically different when we come down here in 1998 to show you the strength of this market, look how close the 200-day is and the 50-day is relative to the present day. We're way, way far away from these levels here. The gap right here between the 50 and the 200 is tiny, and we already closed it. So this really doesn't look all that similar. The 200-day never rolls over. There's no question that there's similarities in the way that we come down, but there's some significant differences here. We can't rule out a 1998 look. One thing that you can see here in 1998, when the risk passed, the 50-day turned up. That was obviously bullish, and when the 200 turned back up here, that was a good sign, and this market recovered. 1987, somewhat similar to this peak. This is a panic. I'm, I'm missing the rally kind of overbought condition. That's not really what we have here. We have a consolidation pattern and more of a controlled rollover. This slope right here is very indicative of the type of panic sell-off that bounces back. This slope is more controlled in the 50-day and more of a rollover manner. Now, there is a lot of similarities to this price pattern in 1987. One thing I get a little bit of a kick out of, people that are saying this is similar to 1987 and have already bought in, well, if it's like 1987, we made a lower low here quite a ways out, so you shouldn't be buying yet if this is indeed like 1987. This is a difficult market to deal with. Some takeaways, though, that could help us. When we come back up here, you'll notice the 50-day starts to stabilize and go sideways. That, that is positive. And then from here, the 50-day starts to act as support. Another positive telling you that maybe it's okay to get back into this market. The 50-day turns up and now starts to act as support. 1990, again, we got more of a, I'm missing the market, I got to get in, and this is a shorter consolidation period than this one is, which looks less sustainable. The longer the consolidation and the more controlled this rollover is, the more sustainable the break appears to be. This is another one of those sharp 50 days comes down fast. And unlike today, the 50 day is coming down fast near price. We're not really anywhere near the 50 day or the 200 day, which looks more like 2000, 2001, and 2007, 2008. Similar to 1987 here, where you get somewhat of a, the risk-reward ratio has improved when we retake the 50-day. In 1990, we retook the 50-day, and it turned back up. The other positive and bullish signal became here. Here's a bullish cross of the 50-day and the 200-day. That's a buy signal and the slope of the 200-day turns up. So how can these charts help us? If you want to study these, hit, hit pause 
and look for things that differentiated these charts from the charts in 2000 and 2007. Now we do a little bit more of a head-to-head -head comparison. This is the present day. 2007, a market that should have been sold. 2001, a market that should have been sold. 1990, a market that should not have been exited permanently. Just summing up some of the things that we've gone over here. Here's the cross. This is that white space V-type pattern that would be bearish. White space V-type pattern. The other differentiators, the 50-day, the blue line, acts as resistance in a longer-term bear market. Here, the first time that we challenge the 50-day, we're able to retake it. 50-day slope never can turn up here. Here it does turn up. This is a bearish signal. This is a bullish signal. can help us potentially in the next few weeks or next few months. In terms of the potential to take an inverse position or whether you would go long or short in this market, a lot of it just depends on how things play out. If you were an offensive or defensive coordinator in the NFL and you ask them, what are you going to call 30 plays from now, they would say, I'm not sure. It depends what the game conditions warrant. It depends what the defense gives me. It depends what... The score is how many timeouts I have. We're just going to have to see what things look like. Some potential options are, here's the present day. If we got a strong, strong rally here that looked very convincing, it's possible that you could take some long positions because we may make it all the way back to either the 50 or the 200. If you take some long positions... That would enable you to make a decision when we reached either a 50-day or a 200-day and decide, do I want to either add to these long positions because it's looking more like this, or do I potentially want to take an inverse position here to offset my longs or take an inverse position here to offset my longs, and in that way you're, you're basically fence-sitting and then depending on how things go from a position like this or this, you either cover or sell your inverse position if it looks bullish, or you get rid of your long position that you took down here and take more of a bearish stance. It may end up being that an inverse type situation, if you're patient and you're waiting for a good risk-reward entry point to take a bearish stance, that may not come for several weeks or several months. The risk-reward ratio of taking an inverse position is really not all that attractive to us here. Why? We're so far away from this 200 and this 50 that if you take an inverse position here and we get a sharp rally all the way back here, that's just not really a good risk-reward equation. We feel that if you're going to take a bearish stance, you need to be extremely patient and consider it taking it when the risk-reward entry point is much more favorable. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivaco Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.